Hey guys, and welcome back. And today we're going over opioids. Now, opioids are derived from the opium poppy plant. It includes legal and non-legal substances. But what I want you to focus more on is the goal. The goal for opioids is pain relief. Now, they achieve the pain relief by inhibiting CNS receptors, mainly those pain receptors. So if we're going to have pain relief, we have to block those pain receptors from receiving said signals. Now, as you can see, there are many, many types of opioids. You have, you know, street drugs, heroin, opium. Um, the ones in the bold are from manufacturers and, you know, pharmaceutical companies. So these are the ones that you are going to see when you're in the hospital setting as a bedside nurse. Codeine, morphine, hydrocodone, and the list goes on. But the point being that those drugs are manufactured. Those drugs are prescription-based versus the opium and heroin, which are obviously not. Uh, I myself had a patient who had hydrocodone and they overdosed on it. And we'll go over all the details with that. But these drugs are very, very strong. At some point, you surpass the pain relief and you tend to cause issues with airway, breathing and circulation, which we'll go into a little later. All right, so again, our indication and our primary goal is pain relief, but these drugs also can reduce cough and they're also used as induction agents in anesthesia, which is basically surgical procedures too. Because when you are, you know, cutting into a person, you don't want them to feel it, you want them to have pain relief. So that's also an indication as well. All right, now the side effects are CNS and non-CNS based. Uh, you have the pinpoint pupils here. You have convulsions, you have nausea, you have vomiting, but I want you to focus on the respiratory depression here. That is the main, main concern with opioids. At some point you surpass the pain relief and they're so, I guess, tranquil and <laughs> absent of pain, they stop breathing. Um, the pinpoint is a very, very important one to remember as well. This is caused by the autonomic system reaction. So when you see this patient, they're going to have very, 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 very tiny pupils. Um, if they are awake, they might complain of nausea, might even vomit, but most people are found borderline unresponsive with minimal like dyspnea or apnea, like no breaths whatsoever. If you look to your right here, you have the non-CNS due to the histamine release. This is why you're going to see the following. You have hypotension, constipation, decreased urine flow, flushing. So let's, let's see the clinical picture here. You have a patient that comes in that is not breathing and their blood pressure is 7 over 15. Your patient is crashing. Um, these patients who have these opioid overdoses is what we call them, need a lot of support that first kind of 24 to 72 hours because we need to get their drugs out of their system. So that is the clinical presentation that you're going to see with someone who has taken opioids or even overdosed on said medications. All right, now, now that we mentioned respiratory depression, as a provider or nurse, you're going to have to understand that the goal is to reverse these symptoms. We don't want to just watch someone decline, become hypotensive, stop breathing, and we not have a reversal agent to use. Luckily, there is two. If you watch cops, you see, you know, first responders and cops carrying these. Um, there are even some paramedics in the ED that carry these. Uh, these reversal agents are great. Narcan is awesome. I've seen it work wonders. You get a patient that you think is coding their apneic, you give them Narcan, they wake up, <laughs> they lose their high, they're very angry, but they're alive. The goal is to reverse the, the those receptors, unblock them, get them up, you know, eight Airway breathing circulation is what's important here. But the main indication for the reversal agent is respiratory depression. We want them to breathe. We don't really care about their blood pressure if they're not breathing. Airway is always kind of number one. And these reversal agents are used uh, in the field and in the hospital setting. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, once your patient is somewhat stable, they've been extubated, they're off their Narcan drip if they had one, you're going to reach a phase of withdrawal here. All right. So especially if they've been on these drugs for a long period of time, they're going to have many complaints. Uh, nausea, vomiting. They might be confused, muscle aches, sweating, diarrhea, fever, chills, insomnia. These are all going to make the patient a very, very grumpy cat. 
patients get combative, they become violent, they become agitated because as you can see, they're not really feeling their best. So as a nurse, safety is very important. When you do see your patient withdrawing, there are supportive you know, medications and that we can give them to get them through this process. But I want to make sure that you know that the number one thing in this situation as a bedside nurse is safety and then symptom management, basically. All right, priority nursing concepts for a patient receiving opioids includes comfort and pharmacology. All right, let's go through this quick recap. Now, there are various types of opioids. You have illicit and obviously manufacturer kinds. The manufacturer kinds are the ones that you're going to see in the hospital setting, and the illicit ones you're going to see when you're, sadly, patients come in with overdoses from street drugs. Uh, the indications include pain relief, cough reduction, and anesthesia. It depends on what your patient is using, but it does work in all of those three situations. Now, the side effects are based on CNS and non-CNS, but I want you to focus more on the respiratory. CNS is what I want you to focus on. Respiratory depression is what we are striving to prevent. Um, the reversal agents, again, you know, these are uh, in the field, in the hospital setting. The goal is to do what? reverse the respiratory depression. We want this patient awake. We want them breathing on their own. When you deprive the brain of oxygen, that is that can be permanent brain damage. We're trying to prevent that. Uh, once your patient is extubated off the Narcan drip, you might even see some with the withdrawal symptoms that we talked about earlier. But again, I want you to focus on your safety. And then it's basically symptom management at that point. And then you could maybe do like a case management for some supportive care but all you can do is support the symptoms that are being displayed. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.